welcome back to another video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're all doing well. I am going to sew the signatures in in this video uh, but before I do that I need to do some stitching on some of the pages um, like this one here that I'm doing I am um, that little bit that I folded over on this music paper I've just sewn down each side to create a little pocket on the edge of that page and I'm going to add some lace and bits in as well um, I'm not going to do too much because this is my personal journal I like to have that creative freedom um, as I go along and I'm using the journal so I'm just adding a few little bits just to make it look a bit nice and make it a bit more pleasing to the eye um, but yeah I won't go OTT on it I shall uh, leave that for later on <laughs> so if I was going to make a journal to sell I would add in pockets and ruffles and bits and tags and all sorts and pockets and bits and this is the stage to do that and I will be making journals with you uh, where I do all that at the start but I want to focus more on journal with me so I needed to whip up a journal for myself um, so as I say this is the, the part of the process that if you want all the pockets and things done for you know so essentially it's just a journal uh, it's just in the future writing then this is the time to do that so I'm having a look through the pages here uh, and checking that I've got all those little fold over pieces uh, sewn down and I'm just going to pull out all my ribbons and things and just pull out all the sort of neutral ones Most of the Christmas ones are still on top so I'm just pulling out all my neutral ones so I can you know know what I've got to work with and decide what I want to add into my and onto the edges of my pages <laughs> This is my little collection of lace and ribbons that I have that I'm going to use. I don't use all of these, these are just a few that I've pulled out and I have left some of these out so I can use them as I go along um, on my pages. And I'm just going to have a play around and sew things and stick things in as and where I want them. I do like little edge tucks and I like if I've got a thicker piece of ribbon or lace I like to create a pocket. Uh, even if I don't end up using it as a pocket, it's nice to have the option there. Um, and if you're sewing something on, it doesn't harm, does it, just to create a little little tuck spot with it. Um, I'm not adding any pockets into this. As I said, uh, I touched on a second ago, I am not going to do anything like that. I like to do a lot of faux stitching. Uh, as I have the sewing machine to hand, it's quite easy for me just to sew around something, a uh, journal card or you know a pocket or, or something like that. I like to do faux stitching so it's where I stitch around something to look like it's sewn into the journal but it's not yet and it's actually glued in. Uh, so this is one of those ribbons that I'm going to create a little tuck spot with and it was like a toss up between do I add it in now, do I glue it down first, do I, you know, how, how am I going to do this? So I decide here to um, just sew it straight in. This hasn't been stuck down at all, I'm just going to hold it myself. Um, the machine obviously draws the fabric through so it's quite easy to do that. If you're not confident with the sewing machine you could glue it down first. Uh, there are some pieces that I'll glue down first depending on the nature of the piece, so like lace pieces can sometimes get caught up in the needle and then they'll gather or they'll shift around a bit. So, But for this one, this one's fine just to sew straight around. I'm using black stitching in this journal because I like the contrast um, against the real sort of neutral clean colour tone palette. Um, I like a lot of the blues and the sort of wishy-washy colours, that's sort of my thing, and then the odd sort of bold vibrant uh, image or piece uh, thrown in every now and then. So but the black stitching just goes with everything, it contrasts. I did tour with the idea of using white but I really want to see that it's stitched in um, so I think it gives it that bit of character. I like. This paper here, I don't know if I said it before, is a Planner Society paper that I've had in my stash for a long, long time. 
So I'm using it here because I like both sides of this paper and I'm just adding this trim straight down. Um, <laughs> the stitching on this is actually terrible when I turn it over and you can see the stitching from the back side is actually really bad but it doesn't matter, I can cover that up with washi if it bothers me when I come to use that page or you know the strip of paper, decorative paper or something. But from the front it's acceptable, it's okay. And I've used straight stitching on this. Um, I still need to play around with my settings in the sewing machine. It's still, the tension's a bit off and I don't know a great deal about it. I don't know, you know, when it comes to troubleshooting, I don't know how to use it, the basic functions of it, but when it comes to troubleshooting, I'm not, I'm not very, very, very good with that. I don't know enough about it to be good, good with that. Um, so if anyone has any tips on that, that would be helpful. Um, this trim here is actually, I found this in our, we have like an antique shop uh, nearby and this was just bundled up and it was um, lace trim, I think it was a couple of pounds and it's actually the edging from an old tablecloth, it kind of goes round, um, you, it, when you lay it out you can see that it wants to curve round and it's just, they've obviously just trimmed it off around the edge and bundled it together to sell it like that. Um, which is quite a nice little find. It's very floppy, so it can get a bit irritating when you're using it on tags and things. So it's probably going to annoy me on this page, but I like it and I've got loads of it. So I'm using it and it does look pretty. So that's fine. And I'll probably, I've not added buttons, I've not added dangles, anything onto these edges yet. Um, because, like I said before, because it's my journal, I like to add these things as I go along. So I'll make them relevant to that day and what I'm journaling about and what I want that page to look like at the time. And I find when it's done, for, like even though I've done it myself, even when it's done prior to me using it, I can find it very restrictive. Um, so yeah, I like to do it as I go along. This is one, this lace here, is one that I would glue down before sewing. Um, because as I said before, the, um, the lace, the, the finer lace can gather and it can get caught in the needle and it can become a bit of a mess. So to prevent that, I'm gluing it first. So my mum watches my videos. <laughs> And she made a good point when I spoke to her the other day and she asked me, she said there's a word that I keep repeating and she wasn't quite sure what it was and it was signatures. Um, so I thought I would just say for anyone out there who doesn't know what the signatures uh, of a book are, they are the collection of pages. So I folded in, when I was uh, putting my pages together, I was putting in 10 pages to a signature. So I'm folding the pages and I'm piling them together uh, to create one signature. And those are ultimately the little collections of pages that will be sewn into the book to create the overall. So you can see there, there's three collections of papers, otherwise known as the signatures. So sorry if that's teaching you to suck eggs. <laughs> a lot of you might know that already. Um, but I appreciate there are those of you out there who are new to this and don't know just like I once was and I learned through YouTube and through people telling me what was what. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not a professional at this, it's just something I enjoy doing. I love this little piece of lace as well, it's really cute. I need to get some more sort of neutral tone laces, I've realised. Uh, my stash has become very Christmas heavy, so I need to now add in all the Sort of neutral but I want to go to the charity shops and the craft the antique shops there's actually a vintage fair coming here in a couple of weekends so I should be going to that when I go to like a vintage fair or even a craft shop um, sorry a charity shop I look out for things like clothing so like lacy tops um, silk scarves uh, anything like that tablecloths you know old um, doilies, uh, tablecloths that perhaps are embroidered. Um, in the antique shop there is a little selection. It's kind of like a big warehouse and you like individual people rent a section to sell their products within um, and there is one section which has like tablecloths and doilies and old sort of uh, fabric napkins and things so I like to pick those up as and when and I have a few in my stash which I might use 
either within this journal or maybe as a journal cover one day. Um, I could even offer them up as printables uh, if anyone would be interested in those. Just give me a shout and I'll know what it is that you guys want or want to see at the very least. Um, since there's no point in putting effort into putting them into um, digitals if no one's really interested. <laughs> So this little tab here I was going to use as a tab but I decided against it because again it might be restrictive later on so I'm going to set it aside and I will use it eventually because I love this fabric. This fabric actually is a denim and it has this lovely blue design on it. It was actually one of my daughter's dresses, I think she must have been about six or seven when she wore this dress. Um, and I just loved it and when I was going through all the old clothes when we moved house I came across a bag of old clothes and this dress was in that bag uh, I just started making junk journals and I thought oh my gosh I'm keeping that that is lovely and I actually went through all the kids old clothes uh, and that's how my Christmas junk journal for last year came about because my son's old Christmas top was in there so I was just inspired by that so literally just going through a bag of old clothes this lace here that you can sort of see off screen is like a purpley colour and I decide that I'm going to use it here so I essentially add it in as a page in its own right. It won't be used as a page obviously, it's just something to add a little bit of texture in and a little bit of like a different element, different dynamic um, to the last signature. That butterfly vellum as well, I'm not sure if you'll see it in this video, I do take that out actually. Uh, I will probably use it in the journal, but I don't add it in, I don't keep it in as a full page. So I think at this point I'm pretty happy with the bits of lace and the pages and things I've got in. I did say in my last video I was going to print some um, some bits, some text and some images and things onto the actual pages, but again, <laughs> I decided against it. I will, I love this, this, look, look at that, how pretty is that, I actually got that from um, Oh, what's it called on the internet? It's called. Oh my gosh, it's just gone. Literally, it has just escaped me. Um, it's not American. No, it's not American thing. Oh my gosh, it'll come back to me and I'll blurt it out randomly. I know I will. Um, yeah, so I haven't printed any images. I actually thought. I, I have. Well, tell I actually. Start again. I have printed uh, some text. I went onto Google and found some like French text and I edited it so it was basically black and white so I could print just the text onto some vintage paper but instead of using them as actual pages in the book I have set them aside and I will use them as tip-ins, journaling cards um, and bits and pieces. Uh, in fact one of the things I have just made I've used one of those text pages and it's just brilliant, it's genius and I love the way it's come about so that'll be a video coming soon. So skipping ahead, I had a bit of a play around with this one. It was a bit tricky to get it on camera. So this one is already clipped in. I will show you the next one. This is, so essentially where those lines are on the back of that piece, not on the front, on the back, that's how I've done it. And this is all literally me. This is how I have done this one. And bearing in mind, this is the second time I've ever sewn signatures in. The first one, I didn't even measure them out. I literally eyeballed them and just sewed them down. <laughs> it was as, it was as, as simple as that. So these ones here, I have clipped them in and I've eyeballed it so I can see with the centre. So by holding it up, so I'm looking down sort of onto the top of the pages, I can see uh, the line on the back and I can see if that's lining up with the centre of that signature. Then I've simply clipped it. So you now I put the A4 piece uh, over the spine piece. I've clipped that A4 piece to these pages to hold them securely and I'm literally sewing down the centre. This page was actually a bit tricky because this paper's quite thick, the needle wasn't actually going through when I was using the pedal, so I'm actually twisting this manually. Oh, that was a headache. The rest of the signature's sewing fine, but this particular one just didn't want to do it. So yeah, that's, that, that explains why this is going a bit weird, a bit slow, and it's a bit stop-start, so apologies. <laughs> So 
that's the first thing that you're sewing in. I always start with the centre one because I find that's the easiest. Um, but you could go left to right, right to left, it doesn't really matter. And I have added a slight line on the front just to help me when I'm laying it out because the second two signatures are easier to do that way. I find, so you see that I'm literally placing the sort of centre fold onto that line um, and then I'm going to clip these together. So I will look down eventually um, and just make sure that the centre lines up with the lines that I can clearly see on the back um, and then I clip them so I will have to play around this one a bit. So apologies, the angle's not very good. It's really tricky to kind of get the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I will play around with this. This won't be the only journal I make. Uh, this is just me whipping one up so I can do some journals with me. So now I've had a real go at this one, um, I can sort of make it better next time. So this is not perfect, but then I'm, I made this like in a day, an evening. So can you see there that that line at the back quite briefly that line here matches with that fold that's why I've left the lines on the very back and I didn't turn it over and use them on the inside so I don't lose those lines also to note here when I'm sewing in signatures I don't start from the top and go right to the very bottom I start maybe a centimeter or two centimeters in um, and you need to be using the widest stitch that you have on your sewing machine if you're going to sew it I thought for a second here that I wasn't sewing right into the centre of the fold um, but it was nothing that I couldn't save by kind of manipulating the pages and it doesn't no, it doesn't matter a great deal um, obviously you want it as centralised as possible and should I be making this one to sell I would make sure it was perfect um, but for the sake of it being just for me I'm happy these little imperfections make it you know, perfectly imperfect in the words of Shada Campbell who I also love to watch on YouTube her artistry is just phenomenal so you can see how that little doily looks in between the signatures and on the like on the edges of the signatures I just think that looks really cute poking out from the back there I think it adds like a nice little dynamic to the pages so that's signature number two and you can see really how easy this is coming together um, I find the whole faff of piercing the pages and manually sewing them in a bit of a, you know, a bit of a headache actually. Whereas I think when you've got a generalised idea on how to do this, it actually comes together pretty easily. And I'm clipping them in place, there's no movement when it goes to the machine. And I'm lining them up using the lines I, I did previously. So there's not much margin for error, which is exactly what I need because my dog just jumped upon the sofa behind me smash him <laughs> so again you can see here I'm starting a little bit of the way down I'm sewing back on myself a couple of times a couple of stitches uh, just to make sure they're secure and then I'm coming down to the bottom there we go and that is three signatures sewn in obviously the book's not assembled yet but we're getting there we're getting there by the end of this video you will see a completed junk journal <laughs> so again that's it. That is three signatures sewn into a book. Oh, another thing to remember, which I'm paranoid about because I've done this where I've sewn in my signatures upside down. You must make sure your signatures are the right way up, people, because <laughs> that is not fun. Although I did hand stitch the ones in that I did wrong, so it was an easy fix. But if you're sewing them in with a sewing machine, make sure they're the right way up because no one wants that. <laughs> Okay, and you can see at the top here that I've got three signatures and you can almost see a book that's a bit of a mess I didn't sew them in perfectly but it's good enough for me I am happy with that and I'm going to trim off a bit of the excess on this side um, because I did go slightly over on one side it's a bit lopsided so I'm just going to fold in that bit of paper trim off some excess just to even them up a little bit you can't really see what I'm doing here and you probably have no idea what I'm talking about right now but basically the spine piece was slightly, I did the signature slightly over to the right. So you, could you see there, there you go, look, you can see that I folded the uh, main A4 sheet in and that spine piece I'm just trimming down literally a couple of millimetres off it just to make the signatures more centred within the spine. Can you see? They're pretty even now, so I'm happy with that. So I've moved my sewing machine out of the way. And now comes the fun part for me, which is doing the outside of the journal with that lovely fabric. 
and I'm looking at it and thinking ah it's quite a light colour fabric so this book needs to be covered in some white copy paper so you don't see any of that pattern through the fabric so I'm just going to sew that on and then fold it round to cover that book up with it. So the next step for me is to glue on the uh, book covers to the fabric. So I'm just sort of distancing, eyeballing where I need the um, two pieces to be to give me enough room for the spine and I'm going to put lots of glue onto these covers and just stick them down and I will cover the book covers, the book fronts with the fabric. I do stick it I've, uh, on this one, when I get uh, cutting off fabric from somewhere like John Lewis for my covers, I always get 30 centimetres. Um, I'd find that 20 is not quite enough, 30 is plenty, they only do it in increments of 10, so 30 is plenty. So I try and place the book covers down to the bottom side of the fabric um, so I can cut the top strip off and then I can use that piece as well for a tab or something later on keep knocking the camera <laughs> I'm trying to get my head over so I can actually see what I'm doing but the, the camera's sort of hovering over and I keep knocking it so sorry <laughs> so I've got these glued down and now I just need to glue in that spine piece um, and I realise as I'm doing it that the black lines the black stitching is going to show so I will cover that over with some paper as well so you can see here I'm cutting straight up and I've got loads of fabric left over for either another journal or I'm actually thinking of doing like a traveller's notebook insert. Um, so I do like to carry a traveller's notebook around with me. Um, again, knocking the camera. <laughs> yeah, I do like to carry a traveller's notebook around with me, especially just during the year. And I use it for uh, just like the odd line when I think of something that I'm happy about or something nice or I hear a quote or some song lyrics and I like to jot those down. I usually have a sketchbook insert as well um, and I like to just doodle and draw and what have you so yeah I've got an A5 Travelers notebook a leather one that I made which I can show you I'm probably going to make another one in a different colour so I shall show you that if that's something you're also interested in um, and you saw a minute ago that I realised the black stitching was going to show through the fabric so I'm just really roughly cutting a piece just to cover that up and I could do that because the glue hadn't set, so I just whipped it up and um, restuck it down. And I'm literally going <laughs> to keep knocking the camera, sorry. Um, I'm sticking these flaps down. So these, these, these flaps, how many times did I say these? Four? <laughs> these flaps here, this A4 sheet, uh, I stuck over the spine piece and sandwiched in between the signatures. So they could be an anchor for the signatures because I'm just, I mean obviously the signatures are sewn in they're not sewn right through to the fabric so they are just stuck onto the fabric so just to give them that extra bit of strength um, I'm gluing the anchor pieces down and I'm going to sandwich those between the book cover and the um, the nice sort of decorative uh, textured wallpaper sample that I'm going to use on the inside there and that's that done that is our book coming together I'm loving how it looks. This fabric is just lovely. And I'm just pointing out there that there are some glue marks. You can see the lines underneath. When the glue does completely dry, you can't see any of that. So it's not a problem. So if, if there's something that you'd like to make or something you're happy making or you get a bit panicky, that's it's fine. It's not a problem. So my camera cut out while I was gluing these down. I didn't realise. Uh, my battery went flat, so I had to go away, charge it a bit and come back. And so I stuck the corners down. I always start with the corners. Um, I'm probably going to add corners onto this journal, some metal ones, but I don't have any that are thick enough to go around this. Um, just because I've covered it with the paper and then I've covered it with the fabric, so the corners aren't very good. Uh, they're okay for now. If it bothers me later on, then I'll do that. So as I say, stick the corners down and then I go in and add the, uh, the edges. 
I have trimmed where my spine is because of the way I've constructed this journal uh, where my spine is I've had to kind of cut little dints in because this is why I started the stitching a little bit further down another reason why I started the stitching a bit further down within the signature um, so I could literally fold so I'm going to do it here I'm going to put this piece in first and then I shall do the either side strip so I'm going to have to tuck it under the signatures over the spine you can sort of see what I'm doing here it's really hard to show you but I'm tucking it under and then I'm going to glue these strips down it works perfectly fine but originally it was the fabric was too long so it wasn't tucking under so I kind of had to cut a little u-shape into it just to make sure it sticks it, it goes in there nice and tightly nice and snug and it worked out lovely so I should let you watch watch that for a second absolutely love this part of the journal the cover in the, the outside um, I do enjoy I'm going to try my hand at some mixed media covers I think because I love the way it looks to see some other youtubers uh, doing mixed media covers and like layering it up and you know adding a lot of you know so there's a lot going on on the front I like to, so far I've liked to keep mine fairly simple um, so I'm, I think I'm going to try my hand at that but one of my this is one of my favorite ways to do a journal because it is quick it is easy I'm essentially just covering a book with some fabric. You can't really go wrong with it. It's not a great deal of effort, I'm not put much thought into it. I just saw the fabric and liked it. So, you know, for those of you who are new to junk journaling, this is actually a really good way just to start yourself off. When I found, when I first started, I loved the look of all the layers. I loved how it all looks put together, you know, the different textures and, you know, a bit of gilding on the, the edges. And, you know, I, I love all that. But it was very intimidating and I didn't know how to achieve that um, so I found that just covering a book with some nice fabric um, just really allowed me to create a journal without the stress of of all that and that's something I'd like to try my hand at now I kind of feel that I'm in a place where putting the journal together is not so intimidating does that make sense I hope it does anyway this is the wallpaper sample that I showed you in the last video that I was going to add in and I'm sticking that over to cover up just to make it look neat on the inside like you would see in a regular book and that anchors the signature um, the signatures into the book as well it really sandwiches it all together nicely and that essentially is the book put together and I absolutely adore it I love this texture I love this book I'm gonna order some more of this because I absolutely love it and there's the front cover and it is a book and here is a uh, an embroidery piece that I made. I made this a long time ago, last year for Mother's Day. I made this and I did an M for my mum and I liked it so much that I decided to do an L for myself. And I didn't know what to do with it, I just knew I liked it. So I'm going to use it here because I couldn't think of a better place to put it. It's It works out absolutely lovely. I really, really like how this has turned out. And it's one of those things that I had a moment of you know, I have one of those ideas that I thought, yes, yes, I know what I can put on there. <laughs> so here it is. And as I was just going to stick it on, I remembered this trim that I have that just really kind of grounds it onto my book and just brings that sort of junk journal vibe to it with the lace like, poking around. So I'm just going to pop this on around the edge here. How cute does that look come on that is I love that I really love how that's come together I love the lace around it I just oh I just I'm so happy when I was looking at it <laughs> I absolutely adore it I think it's just it's just you know you know when something just happens you didn't I didn't think of it in advance I didn't have it all planned out it just sort of happened and it's just perfect and obviously it's mine so it just works perfectly because 
it's unique to me and it's personalized with the L and just look at it <laughs> I absolutely love it I really really do uh, this embroidery I might show you how I did this um, I think I've got all the threads and things I could probably probably do a new one so maybe maybe if I hit uh, say 400 subscribers um, that's like the next milestone for me I will do a giveaway where I can do um, so one person um, I'll do like a random draw uh, where one person could win their initial uh, embroidered perhaps so give me some thumbs up if you like the idea of that so I'm happy to do that so here's just a quick flip through of the completed so look at that look at that love it so <laughs> this is my completed journal I've already started doing some journal with me so I've done my first spread which has turned out really really nicely so I'll share that with you very soon and I cannot wait to continue using it and show you more as we go through 2020. So thanks for watching, I will see you again in the next one. Take care, bye for now.